So we're excited to get back to work. Uh, you know, the time off has been really great to recharge. But at some point, you know, you start staring off in the distance. Uh, your mind wanders. You're thinking about things you've read, your vision. You know, what's KO doing? What's Barry doing? What's Lynch doing? What are all the guys I respect? Are they out there chasing? And so you start to t start take more notes, and then you're almost sort of full back to work. Uh, but we're glad to be back here. You know, I caught myself at times saying I appreciate the question. So needless to say, I appreciate you guys being back around here uh, to cover the team. Uh, we're excited to welcome everybody back to the building, players, coaches, personnel, staff, everybody. Um, you know, it's, it's great to be around a lot of people trying to be the best version of themselves. We wanted to make sure that we announce a few things and welcome a few people here, uh, the Bill Walsh fellows that are uh, they're in town now, and then also the Gilliam Reichow uh, fellows, which is a new program we have in conjunction with the Nun Wooten, which brings people from other backgrounds into scouting. Um, and so that was a great collaboration between our legends group, our DEI, and our personnel group, and we're excited to have them aboard. You know, training camp is a critical aspect of what we do. Uh, it's going to be a really, really great to have the fans back at practice. You know, the last few years, I haven't really got to see fans in training camp practice, and we're excited. Uh, we have a special group of, of fans, and we think they're really going to like this team. We've got a lot of hardworking, talented, hungry dream chasers that I think they're going to connect with. Uh, you look outside, and it's an incredible setup. Uh, and before I move on, I, I want to thank all the people that go uh, put a lot into this training camp. You know, I show back up in the building, and I say, you know, glad to be back. And there's a lot of people who didn't leave. Um, and they're the people who make training camp happen. Uh, they're grinding away while we're uh, you know, on a beach somewhere. And so I want to really be, uh, be thankful to them. And if you've seen it, uh, it's first class, like a lot of things are in this organization. And that's a credit to the Wilfs, uh, but also the, the pride that people here take in their work. And uh, we're excited to get going. You know, before break, uh, I got a text from Harrison uh, Phillips. And he said, Quace, I can't wait to get these pads on. And I think that just says what we all feel. You know, we love this sport, and training camp is a time where we get to, to see guys in, a, in an environment that's, you know, real football, and we're excited to learn and grow and, and do all those things with our, with, um, with our group. Uh, Kevin and, and has put together an incredible plan, detailed, intentional, really set to optimize our players, and, and not just in an evaluation sense, but to be, make them the best version of themselves. Um, and again, that's just a great credit to uh, Kevin, Tyler, his staff, and all the work they put into this. We, you know, in, in walking around the building, you know, obviously you, you see players, you, you dap them up and you say hello, how was your summer, all that stuff. And there's a lot of guys who were on a personal mission this summer, a lot of guys who, who really bought into what we were, we were talking about, the goals we set for them, uh, player development wise and things like that. And we're really excited to get out there and see what they look like on the field and, and get going. But as always, uh, you know, I have a great personnel staff that is uh, hungry, determined, uh, dedicated and we're going to adapt to new information and we're always going to try and evolve and, and, and shape this roster um, in, in the chase of our goals. And with that, uh, do you have any questions? How's Kevin's mentality kind of entering his first training camp as a head coach and kind of this is when it like really starts to get real kind of skin. You know, competitors like Kevin, I, I don't think there's some seminal moment coming. Uh, he's, he's been ready for this uh, for a long time. He is incredibly detailed. Uh, I show up in his office, and obviously he'll be in there with you know, Wes or O'Hara or somebody like that, and they're just talking in detail about plays, ready for reaction to this play, counters of this. They are, they're, they're in full season mode, uh, and we're, we're excited. You know, as his friend, I think, now that you know, we're, we're pretty close, I'm excited to see him fulfill his dream, just like I got to call players at, at, at the draft and, and be the one to, to kind of start their NFL dream. I'm excited to watch him become his, you know, the coach's first NFL game. Um, and so as a friend, uh, it's, it's exciting to watch up close. Back in March, you mentioned the competitive rebuild kind of approach to this. Do you have a realistic expectation for what this team can do this year, or do you have to get through this camp to kind of figure that out? You know, ultimately, we set this goal to get in the dance, to give ourselves a chance to be one of the last teams standing, and that's that's what we're we're trying to be. Uh, we're always trying to 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 push that that agenda. You know, as as you said, we, we go through training camp and we learn and we 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 mold and we evolve, and ultimately, you always have to adapt to, to new information. But we feel good about where, where we are roster wise, the flexibility we have, and in, in different things. Quasi, whenever you do a competitive rebuild, you're doing it maybe you're doing long term, but also you got to look at this year. 
This is Vikings team. How much do you weigh or how much impact is what the Packers are doing right now with Aaron Rodgers, two time MVP, you know, back to back? You want to consider that, that big factor in? That's, That's a great question. question. You want to consider all factors. You know, the first path to getting in that dance is winning your division, right? So you want to be uh, sure that you're mindful of the different changing dynamics that are happening in the NFL at large, but also close to you. So that, again, that's one of a lot of factors we consider, but you do in a team building um, kind of horizon exercise to consider a lot of factors. The best thing that you can do, though, is build the best team you can uh, for the foreseeable future, and that's really the core focus of what we do. Is that related to the quote that circulated yesterday about not going full Rams? Is that not wanting to give up too much of the future to sacrifice um, and basically not going all in, per se? Yeah, that was, you know, that was probably the, not the best uh, turn of phrase. I think uh, in my evolution as GM, uh, I'll be better. Uh, you know, I have a great deal of respect for the Rams and, and what they've done, and obviously, and what, they, what they've been able to accomplish. What I was trying to say, to your point, was that in football, a lot of times we tell ourselves that we're there, that this is the year. And there's an oblong ball. There's variance to the sport. There's variance to injuries. So to be able to put all your chips in at the poker table is, is a lot of times not wise. You want to be able to do it at two, three, four times so that you can win one or two. That's just kind of how the odds work. If you look at the Patriots and their great one, they got to the game a lot more times than they won the game. And so that's ultimately what I meant. And just, you know, I probably didn't use the best turn of phrase. I'm going to you know, do what my, my wife tries to tell me sometimes and say less. So I'll, I'll say less. There's not a lot of hitting in training camp. And the, the things are different. How, as a GM, are you going to judge that you have the right talent in the right positions. You know, we do get, obviously, we do get tackling in, in preseason games. But to your point, a lot of what you have to do is, is, is imaginative. And, but you have to do that a lot in evaluation. You have to decide when you're watching a quarterback what would have happened if that player had, had made that block and he, he was able to step up. So a lot of things we do is kind of projecting onto a play. So when you're watching a player who can't make the tackle, is he in the right tackle position for the opportunity? Is he attacking the right leverage? Is he getting the right opportunities? And ultimately, you're right. You have to see if one point he can wrap it up. And a lot of times, you use past data, but you have to use the data that you have at your disposal. But ultimately, every team has that, that same issue, right? So we just got to be better than all the other teams at it. We uh, talked a lot about the, the partnership with Kevin and somebody you consider a friend, how do you um, maintain that, but also evaluate the job that, that he's doing, you know, in his first year? You know, it, 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 everything is so interconnected in football, right? It's, you, it's hard to separate the personnel from the coach and what's going on in the team. I just know that we have this partnership where we sit side by side when we make major decisions in this team. And I couldn't be more happy with what he is, the detail, the attention, the reason why. I'm very big on process over results. So I will always ask him questions on the why. And once the why is you know, between the both of us, we, we, we've come to a, a mutual conclusion, it doesn't really matter what happens after that. I've owned the decision with him, and we're, we're, we're arm in arm together. Um, and that's how I plan to operate as we go forward. Is that how you see the, the conversations going this summer when you're evaluating roster, making roster decisions, eventually final cuts? I mean, how do you, what's the sort of the process you're setting up for that, those decisions that have to be made almost daily, I guess? Yeah, yeah. So again, it's very collaborative. I just finished our, our, our calendar and all those things. And we get a lot of information input from our scouts, um, the people who are around them in football operations for the coaching staff. And we really just try and combine them in, in, to a consensus. But also, different people have different time horizons and different uh, objectives, I guess, when, when they're looking at these things. And we got to make sure that we're doing them for the Vikings within our plan and our vision. And again, Kevin is involved in those conversations along with Rob and a lot of other great people in this organization. And we'll be on the same page. Uh, a lot of the, the great part about what we do is we're, we're ahead of things. We plan these things. These things aren't going to sort of come up um, at, uh, by chance. So a lot of the things we've talked about, the moves we've made, were to know where we would be at the cut down, to know what we'll look like in 23. And so those things don't, uh, I don't perceive being an issue. Do you envision daily discussions about you know, the roster and about today's practice and that sort of thing? Do you think you'll be involved at that level? I, I wouldn't, wouldn't say, say daily, yeah. uh, just because I think you want to make sure that you're getting enough information. You're also giving, I have to give myself time to collect that information, right? I'm, I'm, I'm part cog in the process and also leader of the process. And so we, we have set time to really go through and, and, and make these decisions. And we have a pretty good uh, plan in place. I don't know how much you've looked at what they did before during training camp or, or what have you, but uh, anything the fans or the media are going to see that might be different or unique uh, at this camp or what? I can't say that I know too much uh, about what happened um, 
previously, but I think fans should be excited about what they're going to see. Uh, I keep joking that it looks like Roland Garros out there, or the RG was saying maybe the Kentucky Derby, but it's a beautiful setup. Uh, we've got a lot of players who are excited to be here. Uh, we got a positive environment. It's going to be fun. That's all I can say. I know that's going to be fun, and I'm, I, I don't really want to speak to what was before. In the uh, USA Today piece, you mentioned that, uh, or it was mentioned that you view uh, player evaluation in the draft not as here's the set trajectory for each player, but that each player has a certain probability of different outcomes. Uh, when it comes to roster decision making for the final 53, do you view the players on the roster that way? And also, if you do, how do you avoid decision paralysis for, say, some of those middle 25 players if there's, like, 80 different outcomes for each player? That's a great question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, ultimately, you do try and assign a probability, right? And it's not just the probability or the outcome that you think you're going to get this year. It could be, you know, it could be 23, 24, and, and also making sure that it aligns with your, your time horizon and your goals. You know, the decision paralysis piece is potentially an issue, but we have, we have a really detailed process. That's why we collect so much information. And ultimately, you know, when you get on the margins, those, some, a lot of those decisions are 55, 45, 60, 40 at best. And you live with them knowing that you have a great process, you understand why. And having the coaching, having somebody like Kevin up at my side, having us all involved, you can make decisions happen, if you know what I mean. Like there's a 60, 40 decision, but if you're aligned in it, you can withstand the variance of the day, the ups and the downs. And we're going to do everything we can to make that a 70, 30, and 80, 20. So I, I'm, I don't worry so much about those decisions. When you get to those 55, 45 decisions, how do you know the decision that you're making, if it's small margins, how do you know the decision you're making is on the 55 side? Oh, you don't. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know that anybody would stand up here and tell you that, or somebody with my background would. Um, I think you have a lot of historical precedent, evidence, information that, that leans it in your way, right? Leans it, I think we're on the right side of 50-50, but you always want to be humble. You always want to be updating yourself with information. It's just like when you're at a you know, and you're at a poker table and you, maybe you put your money in and you think he's bluffing, you think he's bluffing. You get enough information, he's not bluffing. It's time to move on. And so I think we always want to be adaptive, uh, malleable in how we think about these things. But, uh, you know, you, you want to be confident but humble. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of that duality that makes a, a great decision-making organization. If you're making decisions on players, uh, how much weight goes into training camp versus kind of almost overweighting it because it's the last thing you saw? Such a great question. It's... You know, we have a personnel meeting tomorrow where we're, I'm going to talk about that and yeah, say less, right? I'm supposed to say less. But, uh, you know, I think uh, in a math sense, you know, Bayesian or whatever, right, you come in with the belief about what you think somebody is. And every new data point you get is some new information. Now, how do you change your prior belief based on that new information you got? Well, how much was that new, new information? How different was that new information from your prior belief? Those are all things you got to kind of factor in. Thankfully, I've had experience in the NFL doing this, um, also in other organizations, and feel good about the process we have in place. But again, that's a great question. It's it's difficult. There's a lot of lot of chance to have a recency bias or, and things like that, or be overconfident, over hopeful. And again, we have a lot of process in place to stop that. Quasi, you're talking about practicing on saying less. What's the harm, and what, what's the harm you're finding in saying more? You might know this better than me, and I'm, I'm kind of new to the, the media thing. I think at times I'm a really passionate person. I love talking about this stuff, team building, decision making, and I think in in those moments I can get theoretical and high level. But as a general manager of the Minnesota Vikings, everybody's going to fill in the gaps of what I'm saying and relate it to the team. And that's, that's unfair to me, uh, for me to, to maybe put that on an organization. I never want to do that. I think at times your words um, can be airlifted out of the context of the conversation and placed on the page. And as somebody who's new to this, I have to get better at understanding how that might look and, and imply things. And obviously, I want to be great for this organization, and I'll keep getting better. Saying more, though, fill in the gaps, though. I mean, like, seeing more, maybe fill in the gaps that you worry about. You know, that's the belief I used to have with my wife, and I've, I've realized saying less is just the best, so best path. That spirit, though, there's, there's one quote I wanted to ask you about sure. that, where you say the one asset where you get nervous about not burning it down as quarterback, was that theoretical, or are you referring to the decision to keep Kirk or not keep Kirk? Or and that's a, that's a great – so that literally was – kind of a riff on the very question you asked me, I, I want to say on our second press conference about team building in the NBA versus the NFL. So that was just a general conversation about why this is such a different exercise uh, than the NBA. And so that in that sport, you do you kind of do want to tear it down because you need the number one pick. And I said to be, you know, the only thing that makes you nervous in the NFL that people are kind of coming to is the position of quarterback. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? And so then the gaps get filled. And obviously, as general manager of Vikings, people are going to fill those gaps. I understand that. But that wasn't said with any of, those, that, any of that context. Kirk knows how I feel about him. Uh, we're in a great place. I love his mindset coming to camp. And, and that's where we're at. Well, see, you and Kevin have been around the NFL a long time, but you're both new at your jobs. I would imagine you'll be better in five years than you are today. How do you guys avoid rookie mistakes? That's a great question. You guys are, you came back from summer with some great questions. It's a, it's a really good one. Uh, you know, I think one of our core beliefs and foundational in our culture is just being detailed and intentional, asking why a lot. So I think you can avoid a lot of those mistakes by not just rubber stamping things. Things were always done this way or, or things like that. And just really being intentional about what you're doing, but also having the humility and the accountability mindset to judge, judge what you've done, try and get better. I, I spent a lot of this summer going over our decisions, going over our process, seeing if there's ways to get better, taking input from Kevin, his staff, about the draft process. Hey, how do we get better? So I think a lot of times, you can do that on the front end by just being detailed and intentional, but on the back end, just really being uh, observ observant about what you're doing and trying to correct those mistakes. You've talked, about the, you've talked about the partnership and the consensus. Like, what if there isn't that in certain scenarios? Like, how do you plan to deal with the like, dissent from one side? And, you know, it's, it seems like early right now, it's, it's easy to have a lot of these you know, agreements, but I'm sure at some point there will be dissent. I wouldn't say that we, we, don't, we don't agree on everything. It's not, that's not, that's not what you know, necessarily what that is to be Kevin and I. As long as you're willing to go into a room and really just uncover the, take the hood off and explain why you came to your conclusion, we can find where in the chain we're different. And at that point, that becomes an easy conversation. Hey, because there's a lot of things you just don't know. If it's 50-50, I'm not going to say, hey, if, you're, if this one assumption is wrong, you're, you know, there, there's, there's just ways you can kind of get narrowed down to the point where we're not disagreeing. We're just... We, we kind of go left and right at a different point in the path. And so, you know, those conversations with him have been great. And ultimately, that started in the interview process, kind of seeing how people talk through things. And, and that's one of the reasons why we were so happy to get Kevin on board. Quasi, did you see any of the veterans reporting today starting on the pup list? I haven't gotten that uh, information from Tyler yet. Um, and it, we'll, we'll get that information shortly. You said you feel good about the roster. What, what has you feeling so good about the roster? It's a lot of detail we went into. Honestly, when we started this process, just evaluating the team, there, were, there was a good team that played last year. Obviously, the NFL, there, there's margins. And, and winning or losing can come in really you know, weighted, out, weighted uh, opportunities. And so I think this team had a good baseline to start. I think we, we, we tried on the margins to correct some key things that could have you know, small things that could have big, bigger, bigger impacts. And then ultimately, we love our draft class. We love the people we brought in. We love the mindset, the character, and all those people. Um, and we're excited to see what we're at.